I'm Ellen McCauley and I'm at Pray It Off in Syracuse, New York. And it's interesting because when we were going over Wisdom, Chapter 16, Linda mentioned mercy. Mercy. And I, I wanted to talk about mercy tonight, and I'm going to get the, into that in just a minute. I wanted everyone to notice that I have included a Corpus Christi Novena that you start tomorrow and finish on June 2nd. And um, the most powerful part about this novena to me is the end where it says, through the power of your love, help us to be of service to each other as we entrust ourselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And I invite you all to do this very small but very easy uh, Corpus Christi Novena. And I went to this seminar at work, you know, I'm on the wellness committee for the Onondaga County, but it's, it's an honor to be on there and I feel I can really participate plus learn things to bring back to you. So I went to a stress seminar and the person was from the American Heart Seminar, a uh, Heart Association, and she said that the World Health Organization, very famous World Health Organization, deemed something the health epidemic of the 21st century. Health epidemic. Epidemic. Does anyone know what that is? Obesity. No, and I knew that would be the first guess. Stress. Stress. Stress is the number one health epidemic of the 21st century. The 21st century where we have dishwashers and riding lawnmowers and phones to text and Facebook and Instagram and cars to take us everywhere, where we can go to grocery stores and get food, where we can hire people to clean our house. We are more stressed in 2018 than the people at the turn of the century who were hungry or going through the depression. And there's a reason for that because we're losing sight as a people. Now, they didn't say this in the stress seminar. This is Ellen McCauley 101. We're losing sight of the meaning of life. Because what they did say in the stress seminar, and they didn't wrap Jesus around it, but I will, is the number one cure for stress. This is the World Health Organization, and I'm not going to make you guess, but the number one cure for stress is helping others. Number one. And I was blown away by that. And I wanted to stand up and say, hello, yes, isn't that what we as a Christian people are supposed to do? And I want to talk about mercy, because in helping someone, you're showing them mercy. 2016 was the year of mercy. And as we're wont to do, you know, we might be thankful at Thanksgiving, but Thanksgiving's over, so we're not so thankful anymore. And we might, you know, be all happy to our family at Christmas, but when Christmas is over, we don't think about that anymore. So the year of mercy was one year, but are we supposed to be merciful always? Yes. And I wanted to go over the Ten Commandments of Mercy because it is the bottom line of helping people. And if we help others, it reduces our stress, and it helps us with our weight. Because I don't know about you, but I was, and still am, a stress eater. But the thing that saved me about Pray It Off wasn't just, um, it wasn't just having God be a part of it. It was helping others achieve the same goal. My stress levels went down. I was busier, but my stress levels went down. My, my um, weight started to go down because I feel that God was saying to me, that's the most important thing, Ellen. Help others, help others, help others. He needs to remind us to do these things. Mercy, we, we want God to show us mercy, don't we? God, be merciful. Show us mercy. And yet, we're, we're, we, we don't always readily share it with others. And you might be sitting out there going, oh, but I do, I do. Think about the big news story now, the kid in Camillus that the parents are trying to get out of their house. Haven't we all judgy judge? We're on two sides of the fence here. Why doesn't that kid get a job? 
What is it? Get out of the house. Or those parents. What kind of loving parents are those? Everyone's got to stand. Everyone's judgy, judgy. And somebody asked me about it, and I said, you know what? I haven't walked a mile in, those sho in their shoes. I don't know what that son's going through. I don't know if he's suffering from mental illness. I don't know. I don't know everything those parents have been through. But you know what I do know? That I'm going to pray for them every day. Because what they're going through is so difficult and so upsetting. And I think I would never want to be in that situation. But aren't we quick to judge, judge, judge? You know, I was even thinking about the guy who, um, uh, was drunk driving and ran through Onondaga Road and, and killed those three OCC people. I mean, he has been vilified. And my first response might be, oh my gosh, how could he do that? How, 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 blah, 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 blah. And, 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 and is that our place to do that? Or is our place to go, what a tragedy, what, 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 what a terrible situation. I am going to pray for him and his mother and his family. And that is the kind of mercy because Jesus loves him. Jesus loves that man and he wept over that situation. And when we find ourselves not wanting to show mercy, think about how many times we said to God, please have mercy. Have mercy on me, Father. Have mercy. And we want to give it and get some. Mercy is the deepest thing about God's heart. Mercy is mentioned 283 times, the word mercy in the Bible. Love is mentioned 310 times. So love and mercy, they're mentioned just about pretty much the same time. Mercy is the essence of true religion. Aren't we supposed to reach out to the poor, show compassion? We all stand in need of mercy. And the funny part about it is it's undeserved. Do we really deserve the kind of love and mercy that God shows us? Do we deserve that he loved us enough to send his only son? And when I think about helping people or showing mercy, it makes me less stressed. If I talk about praying for someone going through a difficult situation, it makes me less stressed. And then I don't want to overeat or do things like that. The mercy, the practice of mercy sets us free. I don't know about you, but I like being free. And you know, Bob and I liked going to New York. We had a good time. We had a great time. But you know what I like? I like being home. I like being in my nightgown. Yes, I still wear a nightgown. Oh, funny quick story. Uh, I went to this dementia care conference yesterday, and I had this bracelet with a charm on it. My niece just gave me, and I lost the charm. And I was like, oh, she just gave it to me. I'll, re I'll, I'll, I'll retrace my footsteps, but let me go over to the desk. I go to the young, young girl at the desk. I said, hi. You know, I had this charm, and I lost it. If anyone turns it in, she's like, do you have a cell phone? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I have a cell phone. And she goes, do you text on that cell phone? I'm like, yes, yes. So I could send you a text if, 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 if someone finds it? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can send me a text. So as she said this to me, I was saying to myself, how old do I look? I ran to the bathroom. I'm looking at myself in the mirror going, do I? not me, it's her. But, you know, is it, isn't that funny how, how, how I don't even know how I got on that subject. I was thinking about being at, at dementia care yesterday because these people are showing such, they're have, going through such a difficult time. Imagine a loved one. I don't even know people in this room coming down with Alzheimer's, coming down with dementia. I always say to people who are trying to lose weight, we are so blessed if that's our only issue and if we're kind to these other people that really really makes a difference also it replaces self-interest and mercy calls us to do work it's one thing just to say well i'm a merciful person you're supposed to do something about it you're supposed to show people help both physical and spiritual we're going to talk about that our lives are a dialogue 
between God's mercy and <coughs> our weaknesses. Listen to that. A dialogue between His mercy and our weaknesses. I had a weak moment yesterday, and I want to share it with you. I, uh, it was a busy day. And uh, in the afternoon break, they brought out on the table the most honker chocolate chip cookies you'd ever want to see in your life. They were gorgeous, gorgeous. So uh, I was at a display table and everyone went into the presentation and I'm walking into the presentation and I kind of froze there and I'm looking at them. And I had this dialogue with myself. I said, well, I went to the doctor. The doctor said I was doing really good. The doctor said I really wasn't overweight and I really wasn't obese. And the doctor said, you know, all I really have is a lot of skin and I can have surgery and get those skin out. I can have a cookie. And then I said, but you don't want a cookie, do you, Ellen? I said, no. I want a lot of cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did time travel. I, I went back in time. This is what, how God showed me his mercy. I went back in time to 1982 when for five minutes I weighed 176 pounds and I had gone to IBM in Owego for a seminar and I was driving back, but before I left they had honker chocolate chip cookies on the table and I took 10 of them. <gasps> True story, because I, I weighed 176. I was in that car. It's a miracle I did not choke to death. Because I was like, and then it was a total downward spiral. Then I went from 176 to 180 to 190. And then in that moment in the hall yesterday, when God was showing me his mercy, he's like, you don't want to go down that road, Ellen. You've been down that road. And I said, I, I paused and I went, thank you, Jesus, and walked into the seminar. And would one cookie have killed me? No. But ten wouldn't have been so good. <laughs> ten wouldn't have been so good. I know myself. God knows me too. I know what I was thinking of earlier when I said, I like to travel, but I like being home. I'm a simple person who likes peace. I like being with my baby. I like having a nice dinner. I don't need to go to Acapulco. I've been everywhere. I like the graduation. But don't we all just want some peace? Don't we all just want to be free and not have that stress? And that's what mercy is all about. I'm going to read one thing and stop. The only thing at which we are adequate is being inadequate. I love it. Only in knowing mercy do we know gratitude. I'm going to stop right there, Bob.